One of my favorite movies from the 90s is The Thomas Crown Affair. There's just something about an art heist or art in general that seems so elegant, refined, and glamorous. Crown's epic mansion with its walls filled with artwork gives me chills. I've often imagined that as I grew into myself, not to mention my wallet, that I would become a collector. Hell, but if I wait that long, I could be dead. Art isn't just reserved for the rich. Art is for everyone at every price point and in some instances, right under your nose. Are you thirsty yet? Let's get quenched. I'm here with Sharon J. Burton, a Washington DC art advisor and independent curator and founder of the Artinista Advisory, which is an art consultation firm which specifically looks at women trying to build up their savvy collections, which I just think is awesome because that's like my goal in life. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm so excited that you decided to join The Quench because art is something I think that most people feel like they don't have access to if they don't have a certain amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. um, they feel like it's something that they can go into a museum and look, like, look at but can't necessarily have in their own home. So I want you to give us your top five fabulous black artists from the Washington DC area who you think are, should be quenching our thirst. So rattle off your five. Well, once again, just wanted to thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. Um, really appreciate it. Um, there are five artists that I think that um, those in the DMV should yes. really take a look at um, that I think show some promise. Um, one of which is Sheldon Scott. He's a dear friend. Right? Yes, he, he is a absolute sweetie. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I like about Sheldon, and he is just a humble person, but extremely talented. Mm -hmm. um, and he does a lot of performance art, which is deeply rooted in um, Southern um, Black folklore yes. and also African American history in general. Um, so not only is his performance art something that everyone should check out if they have an opportunity to do that. But he also does a lot of beautiful stills of some of that work. Mm -hmm. And that work is very moving. I have two clients, matter of fact, that is um, working on purchasing his work. And um, um, again, because it's so moving and he has such a, a, an eloquent way of delivering his messages, um, I think he's one artist to take a look at. I had the pleasure of seeing him do one of his performance pieces over the summer yes. uh, out in Virginia yes. uh, at the Arlington, the Art, Center. The Arlington mm -hmm. Art Center. And it was unbelievable. It was breathtaking. It was one of the first times that I'd seen him do his performance art, not just his plays and things like that. So I, I thought it was fantastic. And the other thing about his work, he crosses a lot of interesting social issues, whether it's um, gay, lesbian issues, mm -hmm. as a black man, yep. um, as well as dealing with equality mm -hmm. um, and a, a whole host of different issues. Yeah, and regionally, like you said, with the southern yeah. aspect, because he grew up in the south. Definitely. All right, who's next? Who's next? Um, Jamia Richmond Edwards. Jamia is a mixed media collage artist originally hailing from Detroit, Michigan, Motown, okay. um, but has really made her mark here in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, she's currently represented um, by Gallery Matisse in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and her work actually was shown um, in, the, in a recent episode of Empire. Okay, so tell me what you... <laughs> Um, I'll have to get okay. back to you on that. Wonderful. But, but I love that Empire is doing that, by the way, showcasing um, live artists. Yes. Yeah, I think it's um, really fantastic. Yeah, I was very excited to hear that. But she's a young artist. Um, she might she might be a little about 30 now. Um, wow. But a lot of her, her, her main subject has been black women. Great. And each of those portraits that she does has a strong message, has a, has a story, has something dealing with... Um, the, the emotional issues of being a black woman and um, I think that her work is one among the best I've seen across the country. So, so for an art novice, when you say mixed media, sure. what, does, what does that mean? Mixed media means um, most of the time it's work on paper, okay. so not canvas, but just paper that's framed, mm. um, though she does do some work that's on canvas. 
Um, but mixed media could include like found objects. It could be paper, it could be okay. jewelry, it could be um, literally found objects, sand. Sand, okay. Um, anything that an artist may feel that they want it's to inspired. use. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, very cool. All right, next. Um, our next artist that I think is, is someone worth checking out is S. Ross Brown. Um, a lot of people don't know as much about him, but he actually has some work um, that was shown um, at the Anacostia Art Center recently. Um, he does some interesting, um, what we call realism, and when we say that, it's yeah. not abstract. It's like, you know, a painting of a person. Okay. Um, and he takes uh, women, and actually, um, like modern day women, he'll take photographs of different women and actually create portraits as well that are from the Victorian era. Oh, I love that. Yes, it's, it's kind of like, um, kind of like Wiley's work. I but, was gonna say, I yeah. was gonna say, okay. But it, it, it actually, um, uh, it's, it's a little different in that um, they're not so much maybe placed on something. Like, you okay. know, a lot of his work right. is on horses and that sort of right. thing. Um, Brown's work is just like straight portraits. And, like you would and, see like with a Victo in a Victorian era. Right, right, okay. right. Like royalty. Right, kind of okay. like a commissioned portrait. Oh, I love that. And it, it's, it's very well done. Um, and um, he's been recognized um, nationally, has shown a lot in New York. Um, and I think he's someone that needs, deserves more recognition and more views. Um, well, I'll definitely so, check him out. Yeah, he's That's great. He's, he's awesome. He All really right. is. Next on your list. The next artist is Maya Freelon Asante. Are you familiar with her? Her name sounds familiar. She is actually uses tissue paper as a lot of the, the to um, kind of create a lot of the work that does she, she does. Does she work with women a lot? Like, um, is it is it uh, is it portrait based or is no, it okay? Because no, there was a black artist that I saw that had the women's their hair and all the different like. Anyway, okay. About that. <laughs> High tissue paper. Yeah, I'd never seen that before. Oh, okay. So that's kind of interesting. But um, Maya is actually um, her parents are, are quite uh, famous. Um, mm. Her father's an architect, and actually is the, the main architect uh, firm that's working with the new National African American um, Museum. That's Which coming I just up learned that we're are using all black architects. Yes. So no yes. Idea. He's one of the, the architects with that. Wow. And her mom is in, is in the music, um, is a performer, and uh, so she comes from a very talented family. Yes, obviously. But she uses tissue paper, um, kind of in again. There's that word, mixed media mm -hmm. pieces. To um, it, it creates like kind of a merging of different colors. But she also uses photographs to also tell stories as well. So it's sort of a combination of the tissue paper and, and getting the tissue paper wet to create different designs and patterns. It sounds like it would be so delicate to work with. Yeah. But I'd love to see her process of doing that. Matter of fact, there's a couple um, videos on YouTube where she um, really actually kind of talks through a little bit of her process. Oh, I will have to check them out. And she's represented locally at Morton Fine Art mm -hmm. in DC and um, Gallery Matisse in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So. Those are two places to check out a lot of her work. Oh, I'm see, I'm getting so cultured. I feel so good. Okay, finally, rounding out your list. Rounding out my list is Shantae Gates. Mm -hmm. uh, Shantae um, is a local artist who has recently relocated to Philadelphia, but still works very closely in the DC area. He has what you call um, more of a surrealism mm. style of work mm -hmm. with his um, his art. Tell people what surrealism, surrealism is. Because I think of Dolly. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Salvador Thanks. Dolly. All right. Um, I'm trying to think of a nice way of putting it. Surrealism is um, is 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 kind of like realistic art, but it's like scenes that may not make sense to the right. eye. Uh -huh. Like for example, if it may not be just a landscape. It might be a landscape with um, different kinds of objects in it that, that wouldn't necessarily that wouldn't belong. Necessarily belong. Okay. But it, it's a, it, it tells its own story or it evokes a certain kind of emotion. 
Uh, Shante does a great job with that. I think particularly for this generation, he you know uses a lot of objects um, from the hip hop community as well as just traditional kinds of different things, and it creates some really interesting kinds of um, work that really attracts I love the eye. That. So what it, what one piece of advice would you give to someone like myself, right, who is very interested? in getting into collecting, what's like some little baby steps that we can take um, to get into art and bring it into our home and not just someplace that we go and look at it? I think look as, mu at as much art as you can um, and really train your eye on what you consider to be good art, you know, because I think in the beginning, you know, we look at art, oh, that's good, but when you start looking at a lot of art, you begin to realize, well, oh, that's amateurs compared mm. to mm -hmm. what somebody else is doing. So almost like sharpening our, we need to sharpen our palette. Sharpen, sharpen your palette, absolutely. Sharpen your eye, and as you sharpen your eye, then you can start making choices that, you know, zero in on those works that really appeal to you, and then, you know, look for ways that you can acquire them. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I feel like I've learned something. Well, I feel I've I'm learned, like so I'm, excited. I, I, I've learned a lot just to be a part of this process and to be a part of this video. So I, I thank you for inviting me to be a part. Absolutely. Next time on The Quench, your pocket-sized guide to pop culture, we're celebrating Women's History Month with fabulous black women from the DMV. That is it for us here on this edition of The Quench. I hope that you consider yourself quenched. And until next time, friends, stay thirsty.